Hello, I'm Jerry Chris. I'm a fly tire and fly fisherman out of Lapine, Oregon. Uh, today we're going to do a, a steelhead pattern I call steelhead magic. Um, it's a variation of a fly that I learned a few years ago. Uh, and I added a couple things to it and it seems to, uh, I don't know, seem to really help it. Okay, we're going to do a uh, hair hackle out of uh, Arctic Fox. So we're going to, first we're going to put in our black thread, tie it at the back. We're going to put a little tail in here. We're going to put a tail in of Arctic Fox. Now this is Arctic Fox tail that, is, that has been dyed. You can see I have a whole bag of it here. There's a red. We're going to use the red and we're going to use this, this purple. Okay. So we're going to put a red tail in, which is kind of standard on a, uh, on a steelhead fly. I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to drag back the hair, the all the way down to the skin. I'm going to pull down until I get about as much of the, of the hair I want. And then I'm going to give it a twist. And then I'm going to cut all the way down at the bottom of that twist. And that way when I do that, I'll get all the material that I, that I wanted. Now we're going to stroke this and we're going to clean this up. I'm going to take this under fur out of it. I'm going to save that for dubbing. It makes beautiful dubbing. And you see we're getting it down to just the hair fibers. That's what I want for the tail. I'm going to spread it out in my fingers a little bit like this and then I'm going to pull it. Just clean it up some more. I want this real clean. I find it works better that way. I'm going to put it back together. Now I'm going to realign these tips. You can see the tips kind of ragged there. And, and how I'm going to do that is I get a nice background that I can see, the tips. And I'm going to pull them out and I'm going to put it back. I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to put it back. Pull it out and I'm going to put it back. And the only way that I know the tips are, are, are there is I know about where they are in, my, in this hand. I know where those tips are so when I put it back and it just comes with practice. It's something you, you have to play with. It's not something you're going to pick up very quick, um, but it's something you do. And then the tips are pretty well aligned. Whatever real stray ones I have now, now I pull out. Now we're going to put that in. And you see I'm just about to the hook point, but I didn't make it to the hook point. So I'll put this tail in. The tail is going to be basic from the hook eye to the, to the hook point. That's as long as this tail is. And then I'm going to put it right there, tie it right down on top. Nice hard wraps. I'm going to take one wrap right underneath it to drag it up just a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to trim this out kind of at an angle because I want this a little taper to this. Now I'm going to, I'm going to flatten my thread out. I'm going to take my, my thread forward. A nice touching wraps because we're going to lay down a base for a tensile body. Stop, spin the thread. Every time you go over the hook shank like I'm doing, you put one twist in the thread. All I'm doing when I spin it is take those out so the thread stays flat. I don't want a cord going over this. I want a flat thread. I get better holding power and it gets a smoother, a smoother body as you will see. I don't have to put a hundred wraps back and forth on this. I'm going to be able to go one time on this thing and I'm going to have a nice, nice flat body. Now, far as the hook, I didn't mention that before, but this is just a, just a, a light wire dry fly hook. You can have the, the one with the bigger curve in it if you want. It really, the hook, it's just make sure the hook is black. And you wanted a light wire one. You don't want a heavy, heavy wire hook for this. Okay, make sure that tail is up on top. It is. If there's anything at all, get it out. Okay. So now we're going to put in a tensile. I'm going to use just Mylar tensile. And this is a fine one. I work with it pretty well on this fly. We're going to have the silver side show, so I'm just going to lay it up here, and I'm going to tie it in. 
and then I'm going to start winding it to the back. Now, this is a rotating vise, but I'm not going to use that feature just because I'm just going to show you how to hand wrap this for those of you who don't have it. And what I'm doing is I'm going and touching wraps. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the tinsel out, I'm dropping it, and I'm coming back in. You also can go right on the edge and just move it slightly, and you can feel it drop off the edge of the, of the preceding wrap. It's just kind of a, you can, it's a feeling process. Now, one of the, one of the things that get tires and, 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 and get uh, people when they start tinsel bodies or any kind of flat material is how do you go back the other direction? without getting that bump or the envelope here just on top of the tail. You get this kind of an envelope thing. Well, the way I found I get rid of it is as I come over this last, going to be my last wrap, this direction, as I come over, I start putting a little tension on it. And I'm putting tension at an angle, that angle like that. When I come underneath, I'm perpendicular to the hook. And what I'm looking at over here now is I'm looking at a little bit of black left over from that thread. And now what I'm going to do is as I, as I come under, I'm straight para, perpendicular to the hook shank. Now as I come over the wrap, I'm going to start taking and putting an angle on this. And I'm going to pull. And when I pull and I come now, I'm going back at that angle, you won't get the envelope and it's gone and you'll see that you have a beautiful so and what I'm doing is I'm covering half of the hook shank and half of my first layer of tinsel so I kinda just split the difference and that little taper drops right off and stops that enveloping that's what I call it I don't know what other people call it we'll come back we have this beautiful tinsel body and here I can feel it snapping down when I get up here one wrap to wrap, kind of, kind of get an angle to these wraps so you get a good hold on this tinsel and pull it in. Trim it off. That looks pretty darn good. Okay. Now for the for the thorax or this little ball, we're going to use this. It's called shrimp pink eye stub. Uh, fluorescent orange is another one that works. You can see this stuff has all kinds of life and color in it. And we're going to make a ball up here. Now one of the tricks about dubbing this stuff is put a little bit on in the beginning. This is one of those where it really makes a difference. If you're going to put a lot of this on, get yourself a layer because otherwise you can't stick a big ball of this on. It just will not do that. It doesn't like it at all. And, and my, first, my first layer is kind of, is kind of tight. And then you'll see as I'm getting, that's two layers. And I'm going to put a third layer in. It's getting looser. And you see we have a pretty nice look there. So now we're just going to wrap that in. Kind of crossing wraps. And we get a very nice ball. Now I'm going to drag everything back, just like if this was a hackle. And I'm going to put... There now. The only thing is, I got a little too far back. So I'm in charge of this fly, so we can make adjustments. So we're going to come forward a little bit. Stroke it back, come right in front. There. Okay, now it's picked out pretty good. If you had a dubbing teaser and you wanted to pick that out a little more, you could. Uh, but that's pretty darn good. That looks good right there for me. Okay, so now we're going to make our hair hackle. And we're going to make a loop. We're going to make a dubbing loop, first thing. Now we're going to close this loop. Now you cannot close a loop by looping the thread over around. Some people say you can. For this, what I'm going to do, it doesn't work. We're going to take the thread and throw it over the loop and pull it up, throw it over, pull it up. And now that is closed tight right there. That is not open because we need this tight. Excuse me. We'll take it. We're going to take a cowbird dubbing tool. I find it works the best for this. Okay, so now we're going to wax this thread a little bit. And this is a, an old dubbing wax that's in a, like a chapstick one. 
and just, just a little dab. You need a little dab on to hold this hair. Now I'm going to take this purple color. And you can make streamers this way. Um, you can make body hackle this way. Um, you can make any kind of hackle that you can make with a feather, you can make out of here. Hair, I actually uh, do some hair hackling with uh, mink, and mink is only about that long, but it makes beautiful thoraxes on a fly that I, another fly that I do. So we're going to pull out a bunch of purple here. And again, we're going to come down, we're going to grab it, and we're going to pull it, pull out the stuff until I just get the hair fibers. I'm going to lay that down because I'm going to get another, another batch. Sometimes you just can't get it all in one, so don't, don't try. Just stop, take your time. Get yourself another, you can clean up and get another batch, okay? Again, save it. It's beautiful dubbing. So now I'll put the two together. Now we're going to line the tips. Now, as much as we can. We're not going to get them, this one I don't care. I done this on this fly. I don't need the tips. Absolutely perfect. Okay, um, like I did the tail there, I don't need them that, that close. A little variety in the, in the tips are fine. Not going to hurt anything. Okay, we just have to make sure we don't have any of that under fur, I call it, in there. Um, and so now we're ready to go. Now we're going to open the loop up. We're going to take a little water, and we're going to put it on top of my little dubbing ball. And I'll explain why I do that. I do it because if I don't, the little fibers that are sticking up from how it got clean, you know, picked out, will grab the hair and stop it from, from spinning. Okay, so now I'm going to drag the whole thing up in the air. That's why I like the cowbird tools, one of the only tools you can do this with. And I can adjust my hackle any length I want. This is kind of a short one. I got a lot of hair, a lot of length. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to take what I call a first cut. It's one of the reasons I have long jawed scissors is because of this technique. So now we're going to spread it out. Do we get it to a point of, get it the length that I want it? Okay, and that's that's about long enough. So now I'm going to switch hands, and I'm going to hold it. Now at this point, I want to cut these butt ends off on this side right here as short as I can. So I take this finger here, and I can massage that thread back and forth so I can lay this scissors right on the hook shank. And then I can just go, I'd like to do it in one cut, but I don't think I can, no. In fact, we're not even going to do it in two cuts. Okay, get all that material out of the way. Now, one of the keys to this is you take your index finger and you just pull that up in the air like that because you don't want anything pointing down because if you do, it'll grab something. It'll grab that thorax ball and it'll stop the spin. And I'm pushing these in to get a nice... Get me as close to that thread as I can. I'm going to kick that up one more time. I'm even going to angle it out here when I spin this. And you can see it's drying out a little bit, so I'm going to wet it down again. Kick it up and spin. Spin, 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 spin. Now, if you had another weighted spinning tool or whatever, you tried to do it down here, you can see that you couldn't do that. That's why I really like this tool. They don't make it anymore, but uh, people make it in a shorter version, version, and it still works as well. Now, if the thread would break, sometimes the thread will break at this point, and then you pull down, you see that spin? 
Now, because of some of my experience with it, I can tell you that it backs, you saw it backspin, it only backspins about half the time, half the spins of when it went forward. So now I'm going to dampen my fingers a little bit, and I'm going to start running them along the thread, and I'm going to start untangling any tangles that I had in this. I'm going to take, wrap my tying thread forward, a little bit. Now, I'm going to use this tool and we're going to wind that right in place. And I'm going to stroke them back as I wind it. You do not put a wind on top of a wind. This is, it's, every wrap is in front of the last one or in back, however you want to put it. The wraps are side by side. Don't wrap on top or you'll get an ugly mess. Okay. Now you see I'm crowding the head here a little bit, and I did that on purpose because I want to show you how you get away from that. I'm just going to kind of hold tension on everything in my fingers. Again, I'm going to use my fingers as a hair stacking tool, and I'm going to push back. And you'll see when we come back, I've gained, I got a nice gap there again. Okay, so now I can put it down in the bottom of the jaw again, start wrapping in. And we'll be able to get all this in there. And you see me jiggle that like that? That's how I get it to go down in front. If it doesn't look like it's going to go in there, believe me, it'll go in there. Now I've got two wraps of thread in my tool. So if I take one, two wraps, and I go around my tying thread and I pull my tying thread up, that's not coming out of there. Now the other really kind of nice thing about this, for those of you who really like to have small heads, when you do this, there's no way with a feather you can get as small a head as you do with this. And I'm going to push it back just a little bit to stack it just a little bit. And then I'm going to wind and put a really nice little head in here and pull back all the hair so I have no fibers up on top of the thing. Flatten it out. You get a prettier head when you have flat thread. Nice and tight. Again. Now, right now I have a cross of thread because I hand whip this. It's just one of the things that happens in my hand whip. I'll show you, see if we can get it around the camera. That cross of thread, if I was to drag that loop closed right now, we would saw it together and we'd get a bunch of fibers. So we're going to put the tool in backwards here. We're going to open that loop up like so. And we're going to drag up a close, an open loop like that. A couple little jerks. If I wanted to put some head cement in there to make that real pretty and glossy I could. But you can see that really makes a pretty a pretty fly. Now I'm going to take my fingers, I'm going to stroke this, and I'm going to show you what happens when this gets wet. I'm just going to be very light. See the ball in front and if I move forward, this is the action of this fly in the water. And what that's caused from is the butt ends from when we cut close to the thread they're sticking up, so every wrap I have can't lay. It can't lay down, so the next wrap can't lay down. So the next wrap can't down. So the next wrap can't can't lay down. So that's what causes the bubble. And in streamers, it's really beautiful. You can make some beautiful streamers. You can mix colors. Um, you can mix colors to get effects. Um, I mix red and blues to get purple haze kind of a look to it. Um, anyway, it's a great technique. Um, I suggest you use it and uh, try it on things. Anyway, there it is.